If you are looking for a free audio editor with more capability than Audacity, then DaVinci Resolve can be a good option. Although there is a catch. DaVinci Resolve requires a more powerful computer to run than Audacity. RAM with 16GB or more is required, but I was able to run with only 8GB. As I used only the audio editing features at that time, 8GB RAM was good enough to run DaVinci Resolve. If you do not have 16GB RAM, I would suggest you close all other software on your machine and run DaVinci Resolve. If you have 16GB RAM or more, then no worries. You are all set to take advantage of this amazing software. You can start with the untitled project right away or you can create a new project. If you want to save and work on your project later, you have to give a project name. I will give it a name and create the project. It can be accessed with this name later when I open DaVinci Resolve. This is how it looks after creating a project. It looks like quite a complex interface and there is some reason for this complexity. Do not be overwhelmed to see this. All of this will make sense once you know how things work here. By default, we are in the cut screen and it can be changed from the bottom icons. Different screens enable different kinds of operation on audio and video and we will see which one is needed for audio editing. The first task we have to do is to import the media or audio files. The import can be done in several ways and you can see the imported files in the media pool. DaVinci Resolve has a separate screen to manage media files. On this screen, you can browse to different locations on your computer and see what files are in there. Once you get to a location where your intended files are, you can drag them to the media pool. Remember the files you see in the media storage are not imported yet. Once you drag it to the media pool, it will be imported to DaVinci Resolve. It is easier to import from the cut screen when you have a few files to work with or all the files in the same place. You can drag and drop the files in the media pool and the file will be imported. I will drag this file to import. Depending on the file size it will take some time to import. You can click these three small dots to see information about the file. After successfully importing the file you have to take it to the timeline to edit. Go to the edit screen and drag the file to the timeline. You can show or hide the media pool on the screens where it is available. In case you do not see the media pool, toggle through this media pool button. When you drag a file to the timeline you will see two parts, video and audio. As I am working with only an audio file, the video part will be blank. Drag it to the timeline until the waveform of the audio is visible in the audio track. Now the audio is in the timeline and we are ready to edit it. One thing that may confuse you is the beginning one in the timestamp. This beginning one indicates which timeline it is and then the timestamp. For audio editing, we will not need more than one timeline. If you need to work with another track you can just drag and drop below the first track. Next comes the part about editing audio and adding some effects to it. For that, you have to go to the Fairlight screen. Fairlight is a separate audio processing engine and it is integrated with DaVinci Resolve. Fairlight provides all the audio editing and enhancing features. The audio waveform is not visible here, so I will drag it down for more visibility. The timeline can also be expanded from these sliders. At first glance, it may seem like lots of buttons in DaVinci, but they have a good use case and make editing easy. The red vertical line is the playhead and you can move it from where you want the playback to start. Press the spacebar to play or pause the audio. I have decided to make some audio editing tutorials with DaVinci Resolve. Normally, I make audio editing tutorials with you can increase the volume of the audio by dragging this white line up. Volume should not be increased for final production in this way, but it is helpful during editing. I have decided to make some audio editing to To reset the volume double click when the dragging icon is shown. You can hide this mixer panel from the mixer button. The mixer panel shows the tracks and the bus. The bus is a very important concept in the DaVinci Resolve. All the tracks combined output is the bus. 
If you set the bus volume to zero, you will hear no sound during playback. If you are editing only one audio track, make sure you are working with a stereo track. Otherwise, the bus and the track volume will not match. I am skipping details of that issue in this video and you can check my other video regarding that topic. I will give a link to that video in the description. There are other controls like meters, metadata, and inspector. All these toolbars have specific use cases and you may need some of those. For example, the inspector panel will show what effects are applied with what settings. In the mixer panel, you will see the bus and all the tracks. I had only one track so only audio one is here. It is possible to add effects on tracks or the bus. We will see that a bit later. In audio editing, you will need to select audio in different ways. DaVinci Resolve has some selection modes here. For example, this plus-like icon enables range selection. The cursor inside the clip will change to a plus and you can select a range. This is handy when you have to select something to copy or delete. Edit Selection Mode does a similar job to range selection. When you do not need any kind of range selection select the default arrow and you can drag the clip to adjust the timeline. You will get some options if you right click in the track panel or in the clip. For example, you can change the track type or change the track color. I will undo this with command Z and make sure to explore different options to get comfortable with DaVinci Resolve. Right-clicking inside the clip area will give you a different set of options. Clip attributes are something you will need to work with mono to stereo conversion or while facing only one-sided audio. You can mute an audio track from the M button. While working with multiple tracks and wanting to hear only one track, use this S button to make the track solo. You can lock a track to disable any editing on it. You will still hear a locked track during playback, but you cannot change any settings. To be able to change anything on that track, you have to unlock the track. This white dot at the start helps to add a fade in effect. Drag the icon and a fade in effect will be added. I have decided to make some audio editing. One of the important things in audio editing is effects. You can enhance or fix audio through effects and those are listed in effects. There are a couple of ways to add effects to an audio track and it is important to understand those methods. You can drag and drop an effect to the track panel and this effect will be applied to the track. I have added a de effect to the track to reduce the sharp S sound. Every audio effect has a toggle button to switch it on or off. You can turn it on or off during playback and adjust the settings. I have decided to make some audio editing tutorials with DaVinci Resolve. Normally I make audio editing tutorials with Audacity, but I think DaVinci Resolve is much more capable in audio editing and it is a bit advanced. So I These effects are applied in real time, so the changes you make are reflected in real time. Your applied effects on a track will also appear here. You can open the effect settings pop-up by clicking here. You can add more effects from the plus icon. When you mouse over an effect name you will see all the available effects in your system. Remember these effects are not only Fairlight effects, other effects through VST plugins or third-party effects are also listed. AU effects are Apple-provided effects and available on Mac. Fairlight FX effects are DaVinci's effects and most of the time you will want to use these effects. Browse through different effects to get an idea of what effects are available. Let's add the echo effect to have some fun. I have decided to make some audio editing tutorials with DaVinci Resolve. Normally, I make audio editing tutorials with Audacity, but I think DaVinci Resolve is much more capable in audio editing and it is a bit advanced. So I want to take full advantage of DaVinci Resolve's audio editing feature. I had tried different presets in real time and could hear the difference.
You can also do A-B testing by setting different presets and switching back and forth between A and B. This A-B switching helps you to find the best settings of an effect. Let's add one of the useful effects, noise reduction. In this video, I am skipping the details of settings of an effect, but some videos with detailed discussion are coming soon. I have decided to make some audio editing tutorials with DaVinci Resolve. With the echo effect, the noise reduction is not making much sense. You can disable an effect by clicking the red icon here. Active effects are yellow and inactive effects are gray. The echo is now gray means it is inactive now. I have decided to make some audio editing tutorials with DaVinci Resolve. Normally, I make audio editing tutorials with Audacity, but I think DaVinci Resolve is much more capable in audio editing and it is a bit advanced. So, I want to take full advantage of DaVinci Resolve's audio editing feature. Oh, I have changed settings while the effect was toggled off. I will do it again while the noise reduction is on. I have decided to make some audio editing tutorials with DaVinci Resolve. Normally, I make audio editing tutorials with Audacity, but I think DaVinci Resolve is much more capable in audio editing and it is a bit advanced. So, I want to take full advantage of DaVinci Resolve's audio editing feature. The current state of a track can be inspected from the inspector button. Different audio properties like volume, pan, pitch, etc. can be checked from here. Although the effects tab is disabled here. The reason is currently the clip inside the track is selected as you see a red border around it. A track can have multiple clips side by side though I have only one here. If I select the track by clicking on a one here, the track will be selected. You can see the red border around the clip is gone now. The track can also be selected by clicking the track panel here. To fully utilize powerful software like DaVinci Resolve, you have to pay attention to details like this. Practicing a couple of times will eliminate confusion like this. You can see the ESSER and noise reduction is on and the echo is off. If I choose the bus from the mixer you will see the effect tab will become disabled. Because the effects were added to the track, not on the bus. If I select the track by clicking the track panel, the effects can be seen through the inspector. The main point is there is some difference between tracks, clips, and the bus in the DaVinci Resolve and it is important to understand which is what. I have plans to make a video on the details of their difference. Once you are done with audio editing, it is time to export the audio. Select the deliver screen which is the last icon at the bottom. Uncheck the export video option as this is an audio only file. Select the audio and make sure the export audio is checked. Select a file format to export and I will choose WAV. WAV files can be used on any platform and software. Output track is bus 1 and that should be kept unless you need to export a single track from multiple tracks. You have to add this to the render queue and that is like making a list of what you would like to render. You have to choose a file name and location for that file. When the render process is complete you will get that file. Here is the render queue and I have only one file to render. Click render all and the rendering process will start. Depending on your file size it would take some time. When it is done you will see the complete message. I will go to the location I set and find the file name I gave. Here is the file my audio davinci.wave. I can use this audio file in my projects. I think you have gotten a clear idea of how to work with only audio in DaVinci Resolve. Please have some practice to become comfortable. Thanks for watching and see you next.